One of the problems I had with GitHub Actions when I started using it early on is that there was no way to manually trigger one of your workflows. Now it looks like they've added the ability to do that. Let's smash on that. Hey everybody, and welcome to episode 178 of the ASP.NET Monsters. We are here today um, resolving a common complaint. Um, you, you're not the only monster and not the only person that I know that has complained, uh, David, about uh, mm -hmm. about this situation. And it seems like a natural thing. Like it seems like it, it's funny because I think a lot of times when we go in to build a system regardless of what we're doing it seems like the manual thing is the thing that we build first and this one and uh we didn't have that in, in github uh in this flow yeah it uh it just generally makes it really hard to test your workflow without having to you know check things in and pretend that you're making changes to the code and triggering your your workflow in other ways so uh, i haven't actually tried this yet uh, but i have this uh, i noticed this blog post from a while back that outlines the addition of this feature. So I wanted to kind of walk through that in an example here. I'm in our GenFu project, which has a few different workflows that I actually have to go and remind myself of what those are. So we have a few different workflows in here. We have a CI and a release, right? So one that runs every time we do a pull request or merge master, and then another one that runs when we do a release to uh, create a new Git package. So the CI one, which is called continuous integration, that's the one that we want to use. Currently it's being triggered on pushes to master or on pull requests to master. So if we a couple of uh, branch names that we're probably going to rename. Mm -hmm. That's right. We have not gotten around to that and we probably should. Okay. So how do I edit this thing again? There is the ability somewhere. Nope. Oh, workflow file. Edit, which should bring me to their nice little edit UI. And now it would have been really easy for them to call this like manual on manual or something like that. Uh, but no, instead they called it workflow dispatch because they really, really had to take a super engineering approach to that apparently and make it really confusing for no reason. But I think that's all I need to do is add this option of workflow dispatch. So and that will build the branch that's specified under push. It's like a, a fall through to the next. Well, no, th there would be like, there's other settings that we can specify. Why is it doing that? This autocomplete is super weird in here. Uh, there are other settings in here so I can define inputs, uh, but this is just, the weird way that so it's a key value pair that you put in there with no value yeah basically okay okay just a switch I, that turns on by defining I, it i don't know that i have the syntax right there for the yaml when it's empty when you specify the other inputs it would look like this or the other properties uh, but we'll see here so let's gotcha. save it and see if it works testing manual trigger just gonna do that straight to master and then we'll see what happens. So I'm expecting, there we go. This workflow okay. has a workflow dispatch event trigger. Again, not super happy about how they named that, but now I can click this run workflow thing and just trigger it manually. And it was already running as part of the CI trigger. Right, because that was already, master. yeah. Yeah. But it should so have, yeah, there we go. So it's running twice now. So it was run manually by myself. Super cool. Now, the other thing that you can do is we're going to go in there and just make another change to it. And we'll actually add those inputs that are another option here. So that's under the workflow dispatch. You can define inputs. And then you give this just um, some keys that you basically inputs that you would want people to enter. So we could say reason. I think that you can just give these any kind of name you want. And it would be description. Why are you running this manually? Stop doing that. 
we can say that it's required. We can give it a default if we wanted to. We won't do that at this in this example. Um, and what that's going to do is, or what I'm expecting it to do according to the documentation, is when I go to run it manually, it's going to pop up a dialog and at, make me enter a reason why I'm running this build. And then you would actually be able to come in here and reference that as a variable inside your steps. So I would be able to come in here and say something like, um, well, with even within an existing one, I could just reference it as a variable in here and use it somehow within my workflow. I'm not actually going to use it, I just want to see how that uh, UI looks. Uh, but in theory, you can see how that could be used with, uh, I, I kind of picture it even as, for right now we have our release workflow that gets triggered when I create a release through um, through the GitHub UI, but maybe I have a manually triggered workflow that is my release workflow that actually goes and creates the release for me. Uh, so the, it would kind of change the entry point of how the whole release thing works. Um, so run a workflow to create my release, I could give it a version number and some notes uh, as opposed to doing it the other way around where creating a release updates or uh, triggers my workflow. So lots of different ways that you could use that. Let's just do another commit here, testing input changes or input options for manual trigger. So that's going to again kick off our... Yeah, so that will have triggered the build to run again. Uh, but if I click on here, I get that button again, but now... But now that prompt is there. Yeah. And what I'm curious, I didn't use that input that we specified, but I'm kind of curious if, if I refresh this, I should see the one that's running. So this is one that I just triggered. I'm wondering if it captured that input somewhere that I can see. Looks like maybe not. Under that setup, I wonder if it's in there as a... Yeah, I'm not seeing it in the, in the logs immediately here, but... But it is available as a variable that I could reference within the workflow. So the much anticipated and much awaited feature of running your workflows manually is finally there. Uh, I have a lot of places where that would have been super useful when I was initially creating workflows and migrating a lot of my builds over to GitHub Actions, but better late than never, as they say. Happy to see it there. Yeah, it's nice that it's, um, it'll be interesting to see maybe, maybe if we revisit um, this type of stuff again, we could have a look at how we could use that, that variable. Mm -hmm. um, uh, to output it somehow to see it in the logs. Um, it would have been nice to see, you know, like if, if that is really, maybe that's not exactly the intent is to log, you know, the why did I do this manual build, but maybe that you could use that as triggers, right? So conditions like, yeah. will you be, or should this dispatch, like use it as a variable to, to whether or not it should like reset your integration environment when you build it, or if you want to use your existing data or something like that. So you could maybe have it like force a, a rebuild of your data environment or something like that. Yep. Or even just specifying which environment you want it to use or which environment you want it to deploy to, if it's a release thing that you're doing. I could see lots of interesting use cases for that. Yeah. But awesome. I do wish that the feature itself was a little more discoverable because I had no idea that they had added this until somebody mentioned it. Uh, it's just not something that's obvious to me. It kind of feels like you should just have the ability to run them manually without having to add that workflow dispatch, but uh, that's how you do it. So now you know. So there it is. Um, well, awesome. Thanks very much for that, uh, Dave. And uh, if you like to see more information like this and twiddly bits as uh, monsters come together to mash, then make sure you hit that little subscribe bell we publish every Monday and uh, leave your questions down below in the comments. Uh, like, comment, and share. We love all of those things. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you all again real soon. Bye. Cheers.